But I did want to point out um, some interesting things about the question I asked about the lunar eclipse and what it would look like if you were actually standing on the moon, observing from the Copernicus crater. So uh, to understand what it would really look like, you would need to think a little bit about the angular size. If you didn't think about this, don't worry. This is why I'm telling you now. Um, but remember that the reason that we can see, for example, a total solar eclipse from the perspective of Earth is because the angular size of the moon is the same angular size of the sun as seen from our perspective. And that angular size is measured in units of arc minutes, which are 1 60th of one degree. They're very small. And so the angular size of the moon is 30 arc minutes. Um, and the angular size of the Earth as seen from the moon is bigger than that. It's 114 arc minutes. And the reason is because both objects are the same distance away, right? But the Earth is bigger in comparison to the moon, so it's going to look larger in the sky from the moon than the moon looks from the Earth. So you're not going to see a total solar eclipse from the perspective of the moon while there's a lunar eclipse happening from the perspective of Earth just because the Earth will be too big and it will blot out the sun entirely. Okay, um, I also wanna point out that um, the orbital coincidence that we're in where the angular diameter of the moon and the sun are the same for us here, uh, won't last forever. So this is because of the tides. So the tides are dissipating some energy due to friction on the Earth. And this slows down the rotation of the Earth very slightly, but in a measurable way. And because the, I won't go deeply into this, but there's a concept called the conservation of angular momentum. Um, and what it means is that as the spin of one object in a system gets slower, some other object has to increase its spin to take up that total amount of angular momentum. It has to be conserved. It can't just be lost completely to the system. So if the earth rotates uh, slower, then it means that the moon has to get faster. And part of that means that the moon uh, gets farther and farther away in its orbit. And this is actually measurable. And we notice that the moon is retreating from the earth by about one inch per year. So this is a little bit too bad because it means that in the future, solar eclipses will not be total anymore. They can only be annular. Uh, but this is happening very slowly. So I don't think it's you know something to be too sad about. 